Hey there guys, welcome back. Today I wanted to talk about Sonic Prime because Netflix did this weird thing where they decided, hey, we're gonna release the show in the middle of December, but also we're gonna release the first episode five days earlier, but the caveat is that it's in Roblox. If you make your way over to Sonic Speed Sim, you're able to catch the first episode, it's playing on loop, and there's a handy timer that shows you when the next start will be, and I had to wait a little while for this, that's why this is really late in the day. But I finally got to see this thing, and I'm really excited for more. Before I get into my thoughts though, I wanted to show you a very quick exclusive preview for the animation series that me and my friend Pip are working on called The Magnificent Motobook. If I was in charge, there's no way I'd let things get this bad. Hold on. If... I was in charge... If I was in charge, no badniks would go to waste! Everyone updated the latest firmware and new weapons, I'd be unstoppable! It's time Robotnik lost his job to a robot. Sorry, pal, that's just progress. This is so exciting! Indeed! You're right! If you remember, a long time ago, I made one episode of this, and then it went dormant for like three years. But now, we're getting really close to episode one happening, and you will find that on Pip's channel, so make sure you subscribe there. Alright, so Sonic Prime. This is something that I've been thinking about for a long time, because whenever they announce some new Sonic media, it always makes me a little nervous, because, you know, the last new Sonic we got was Sonic Boom, and the game was... You know, I don't really need to say it, do I? But here, Sonic Prime showed off footage of the characters looking relatively normal, and the whole deal with it was that Sonic is going to be traveling through this thing called Shatter Space, which is basically, like, parallel dimensions. And I know that that's a popular thing these days with Marvel doing it, but I really like the opportunity for a story to cross into its own, like, spin-off material or auxiliary stuff. You know, with Spider-Man No Way Home, that was just really nice because you get to see fan-favorite actors playing their characters again. And in this scenario, we're going to be using it to explore a bunch of different scenarios with Sonic and Sonic's friends. And I think the closest thing I can kind of equate it to is actually Crash Bandicoot 4, It's About Time. Because thanks to some footage, we've seen that there's like a pirate world they go to, and that's like very Crash 4 to me. But the first episode starts out in Green Hill, and one thing I noticed throughout this episode is that Green Hill is said a lot, specifically by Sonic. Like, he is obsessed with the place, and he knows, like, all the geological landmarks and stuff, which is nice to see. But also, I don't know why they have him talking about it so much. It's a typical Sonic and Friends vs. Eggman day, where Eggman is doing some suspicious activity near a mountainside when he gets Sonic to dash into him, causing a gigantic explosion and earthquake, which splits the mountain in two. What I really liked about this first part is that Tails is trying really hard to warn Sonic that whatever Eggman's doing is a trap or he's up to something, and Sonic doesn't listen because he gets, like, really emotional over Eggman making fun of Tails, which I think is really sweet. And also, it's very in character, I would say, for him to be like, you know, you can punch me in the face, but if you mess with my friends, I'm going to put you in the ground. Tails wants to figure out what the deal with this is, and that leads to him going off to investigate. While Rouge and Shadow are also around, Rouge has been looking into some mysterious gem called the Paradox Prism, and there's this really funny scene where Rouge, like, intrudes on a Sonic Tails conversation because Sonic moments earlier opened the door to the workshop and didn't close it. And then they have, like, it, it almost feels like a Sonic Boom joke, where she's like, you left the door open, and then they zoom in on the door still being open, except I think in Sonic Boom, they wouldn't have shown Sonic opening the door. So it's like, that was like a more fleshed out way to do that. This whole first episode is told out of order, though. There's a lot of flashing between the past and the future, and it's a little bit confusing, because I actually showed up five minutes late, and I had to wait to see the first five minutes after the first showing I saw. So I'm kind of like, oh, are they doing like a memento thing where it's like going backwards? But no, it's like Sonic arrives in this new area. Also, he irresponsibly destroys the paradox prism that Eggman's trying to steal, which lands him and everyone else in some very hot water, but it lands Sonic specifically in New York City. It's a grade A name pun. I like that a lot. Thank you very much. And this is not Green Hill, but it also is. 
The thing is, Sonic doesn't automatically assume this is another dimension, though. He's very confused because he sees parts of Green Hill, and he's like, uh-oh, I guess the, the Paradox Prism created a paradox or something. I don't know. It's not too long before Sonic comes up against these strange robots that don't have flickies in them, and even fights a robot suit that appears to have a baby inside of it. Then, he comes across Tails, finally, in his workshop, but he has... A little bit of a mean streak to him, and he's got seven more tails than normal. Also, he's going by the name Nine, which makes sense because he now has nine tails. Tails, of course, doesn't recognize Sonic because Sonic is in a different dimension. He just doesn't know it yet. Sonic just thinks Tails has amnesia or the whole world got rewritten. I don't know if they were kind of going to reference, like, the Archie Sonic super chaos waves or whatever those things were called. The Genesis waves, sorry. Probably not, that's just kind of what came to mind. But, you know, Sonic's in another location, he's trying to figure out what's going on, he ends up befriending this Tails by recounting their history together, but Nine had a much darker backstory. I think this whole world might have been maybe, like, the world without Sonic, maybe? I, I don't know, or maybe he's just not around, he's not a hero. But we do see characters like Big, Knuckles, Rouge, and Amy here, and they're all fairly different. Knuckles and Rouge seem similar, like they seem to be part of a resistance, whereas Nine is just sort of a recluse hanging out on his own, and Amy has been turned into a robot, and it's like really creepy how she like opens up her chest cavity and there's like a bird in there powering her. Like, like Amy might be there physically, but that's not her anymore. It's really unsettling. And that, of course, gets Sonic mad again while the council is trying to test him to see what his deal is, and he ends up creating this gigantic explosion where we see more stuff like Shadow shows up momentarily, and then we see a flashback where Shadow just socks Sonic in the face. And I don't know what they're doing with Shadow here. Like, it seems like he's got a bigger role than they're letting on, but it also seems like they're kind of going into, like, the jerk shadow trope a little bit. I'm hoping that that's just a weird first episode impression, because obviously there's going to be a lot more. And that, I think, in the quickest terms possible is the first episode without spoiling too much. Uh, or technically, I guess I spoiled everything, because that was the plot line. But, you know, you can still watch it and have a good time. Right now, this kind of seems like the best of all worlds interpretation of what a Sonic cartoon could be, because I know some people, like myself, would enjoy a like, episode-to-episode episode show that has a plot, and that's what it seems like this is. It's not like Sonic Boom, where it was just really funny. It's more like Sonic X or Sonic Sad AM, where they had running storylines, no pun intended. Not to say Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog or Sonic Boom were bad. I like Sonic Boom a lot. I haven't seen Sonic the Adventures yet, because I haven't done... Okay, I was gonna... This was actually gonna be a video about all of the cartoons, and I was gonna do it on the day of Sonic Prime's release, but I think it makes more sense to wait until I've seen most of Sonic Prime before doing that, that way I can talk about them all together. So maybe look for that in the future. This is a very promising, interesting mystery show so far that has a lot of jokes that made me chuckle, and I think they're going to keep going with how well this is going so far. And the voice actors, oh my gosh, I haven't mentioned them yet. Every single voice actor is obviously different. There's no Roger Craig Smith, there's no Mike Pollock, there's no nobody. These are all new versions of these characters, and that means I am completely okay with having different voices, and they all kill it. I think these voices are so solid for these characters. Like, they're familiar, but they're different in good ways. Like, I think Amy especially, I think I like her voice the most. But Devin Mack as Sonic is a very, very, very close second there. Like, I feel like he's channeling previous actors' interpretations a little bit, but he also makes it his own, which I really like. And he brings a lot of charisma and character to Sonic, which I really appreciate. So, like, seriously, keep up the good work there. With only one episode, though, I don't really have too much to say other than that. I guess the Chaos Council is an interesting idea. I'm wondering if maybe they're gonna be the concurrent enemy throughout the entire series or, you know, season or arc, whatever they're gonna do, or if it's just gonna be like, hey, these guys are in that dimension and then we go to another dimension and there's another Eggman, like Pirate Eggman or something, I don't know. We already did that in Sonic Rush Adventure, though. I'm keeping my eyes open for more of this because I had a really good time watching this, aside from all the people jumping around in Roblox covering the screen and the fact that I couldn't go first-person mode. But that's not the show's fault, and I will be looking forward to watching this again on December 15th on Netflix.